There's no way these Disney World myths are true. Well, we're about to bust them all, hopefully. Let's find out if these 13 myths are true so that you know what to look out for on your next Disney trip. All ears, we are myth busting. Da -da -da. <laughs> Disney World has been around for over 50 years, which means the gossip has been heavy. Gossip turns to rumors and rumors turn to myths. Both you at home and our All Ears team submitted the 13 most popular Disney World myths. The more myths we can bust or prove true, the more you'll be able to impress your family on your next Disney trip. But who knows? The Disney company is pretty powerful. So some of these myths may remain a mystery forever. <laughs> <laughs> now the Haunted Mansion is a very popular attraction located in Liberty Square in Magic Kingdom. This is an attraction that has somewhat of a cult following over the years. It's a very much fan favorite. There's a Haunted Mansion in every single Disney park across the globe. You hop into an Omni Mover Doom Buggy and take a tour of the Haunted Mansion. There are 999 ghosts in the Haunted Mansion, but of course they always have room for one more. And that one more is Sage. You think ghosts walk like that? I was trying to be a ghost. I was trying. This is my audition for the ghost. Oh. Is, is this not doing it for you? It, it needs a little work. We need to workshop it. You're almost there. Okay. Thanks. <laughs> Myth: Walt Disney's in the Haunted Mansion. Now there's a really popular misconception about this attraction. There's this whole graveyard scene that uh, that features these singing busts that sing grim grinning ghosts come out to us all the eyes. Now there's a very popular myth that says one of those singing busts is actually Walt Disney himself. Now we have to answer the question, is this myth true or can we bust it? Bust it. This is a jam for all the fellas got to, what's that? I don't know. Now, while the bus does resemble Walt Disney, it was actually made to represent a very famous voiceover artist, Thurl Ravencroft. Now, Ravencroft is the well-known voice actor behind the Frosted Flakes mascot, Tony the Tiger. They're great! And the singer behind famous hits like You're a Mean One, Mr. Grinch. You're a Mean One. And he is a vocalist in Grim Grinning Ghost as part of the singing quartet, The Mellow Men. So it only makes sense that his likeness would be found on the ride. It is funny, though, how similar the two men looked. There are actually so many other myths that happen to be within this attraction. For example, uh, the story goes that when you're in the attic and you see Constance the Bride, that because you're going backwards uh, out of the attic, door, uh, out of the attic, it's supposed to be like you're falling out of the attic, and then you are basically un, un, unaliving yourself. And uh, now you are in the graveyard, and that's why you're able to see all the ghosts, because you've jumped out the attic door. Now, do we know if that myth is true or not? So is Walt Disney in the Haunted Mansion? No, he is not. Myth busted. Myth, no alcohol in Magic Kingdom. Magic Kingdom is Walt Disney's OG park, opening up in 1971. It was supposed to be for all families. Uh, it was supposed to be a basically a, a dry park, so that way it could be filled with family fun. Emphasis on the family. No alcohol, but is that still the case? No. So this myth actually used to be true until 2012 when New Fantasyland opened and Be Our Guest became the newest table service restaurant that does serve alcohol. So table service restaurants in Magic Kingdom actually do serve alcohol, but only table service restaurants. You're not, it's not gonna be an Epcot experience where you're gonna have an alcoholic beverage just walking around the park. You've gotta be at a table service restaurant. But also they have Club 33 here. Club 33 is a member exclusive exactly. um, membership that you have to pay so much money for. So much. It's an exclusive club that you only get access to by invite membership and then you have to pay for it. But they have clubs and lounges in all four Disney World parks, but it's a secret. It is a secret. You'll only find basically like little, uh, like a 33, a Club 33 symbol on the outside of the door. That's where you know, oh, there must be a Club 33 around here somewhere. I was very fortunate and got invited to a Club 33 once, and it was here at Magic Kingdom, and it was basically all nautical themed, like different ships, but that's a big thing. You cannot film inside it, no matter what. No pictures, no video, no voice memos. <laughs> you cannot film inside of it, just because they want to uh, maintain the secrecy of it all and the exclusivity of it all. But we always say if you're drinking at Disney World, we give as many safety talks as we can. That if you are drinking at Disney World, one, drink lots of water. It, go drink, water, drink, water. Just that way, 
you're not making a big mess. Also, grab snacks along the way. Never, ever drink and drive. And also, no matter what, remember, it is still Disney World. Be respectful. Don't act a fool. Don't get kicked out of Disney World. Um, don't be annoying, honestly. You heard it here for, first, folks. Don't be annoying. <laughs> the myth that there's no alcohol in Magic Kingdom? Busted. We are busting myth, but please drink responsibly. Heading to Disney World but don't have a huge appetite? The kids' menu may be your secret weapon. Adults are welcome to order off the kids' menu from quick service restaurants all around the parks and resorts, and some of the options are pretty great. So conveniently, it is Linda Five. So I came over to the China Pavilion to eat at Lotus Blossom Cafe, where I got the kids sweet and sour chicken. They have, it's sweet and sour chicken served with rice, carrots, applesauce, and your choice of drink. I love the water. This is gonna easily fill me up because I don't need a huge meal when I'm walking around Disney World, and so on for kids meal for the win. Also, this was under ten dollars. It was only nine dollars and eighty-six cents with tax. It's also a cheaper way to eat around Disney World. Now, if you're heading to a table service restaurant, your mileage may vary. At spots where it's a one price fits all for adults, then you'll be paying based on your age, no matter how much food you eat. At places where you order off the menu, you may be able to order a kid's portion. Just make sure to ask your waiter. So the men that adults can't order off the kid's menu, busted. Only for quick service. The infamous Andy's coming myth. In the Toy Story movies, the toys obviously, uh, they come to life. When a toy would shout, Andy's coming, they would know that, oh gosh, the humans can't see us alive and they would all drop to the floor. Well, there was a picture that happened in the park that looks very similar to the uh, the animated movie, but it was happening here in real life with a, a guest and uh, a Toy Story character here in the park. While that picture may have been 100% true, and for a small, small time, there may have been an unspoken like, oh, this is something we're doing for fun now, but it was never really approved by Disney or anyone. Once the viral picture caught on and everybody was screaming, and he's coming, well, I imagine it would start to damage uh, their, their costumes, their outfits. I mean, it certainly wasn't safe for these Toy Story characters to be flinging themselves on the ground. And obviously they wanted to, you know, create a fun magical moment. That is definitely not allowed in Disney World, specifically for the safety of the guests and the, uh, and the Toy Story characters. However, with the opening of Roundup Rodeo here in Toy Story Land, they actually brought the bit back. And it, and it is the only place that when you hear Andy's coming, the entire restaurant, the wait staff, uh, hopefully the, if the guests, the, 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 the patrons, if they're playing along, they will all freeze when you hear Andy's coming. You hear the, the kids playing around, running up, all the lights will change. It's a really fun, immersive effect. If you want to see that effect, we actually have a full review of Roundup Rodeo Barbecue up on our channel. Go check it out now. I think the fact that they brought this bit back, I think, uh, one, it really speaks to how much they actually do listen to the fans because it really does make you feel like you are shrunken down to the size of a toy. Andy is coming. Everybody's got to freeze. I love that they found a safe way to make that fun bit that went viral uh, happen. So as far as the Andy's coming myth, it's officially busted. You cannot shout Andy's coming because they will not fall down anywhere in the park unless you're at Roundup Rodeo Barbecue because then it's a whole bit and, and, and there are designated times that it happens and it's all safe. Andy's coming was a fan-made bit but now Disney took it and it's here. There. All right, next myth is that there's an underground city in Disney World. While this myth might not necessarily be true, city, with the keyword being city, it is true that there is a system of tunnels underneath the Magic Kingdom. Magic Kingdom is actually built on the second floor. And we are actually standing on top of it right now in Fantasyland. Underneath us is everything from offices, restrooms, warm-up facilities, rehearsal spaces, costume areas, a bank, a subway. Eat fresh. Uh, wait, you know, maybe it is a city. Another purpose of this underground city is so that cast members can walk around in their costumes without being seen. Uh, Walt Disney, when he first created Disneyland, he saw a Frontierland cast member walking through Tomorrowland and thought that is ruining the whole theming. So when they built Magic Kingdom, that's why they built this underground tunnel system so that cast members in their designated costumes won't be in the wrong land. If you want to learn more about all the secrets about Disney's Utilidors, you can go check out my video already up on the channel. So the myth that there's an underground city in Disney World? Proven. 
standing on top of a Disney city, standing on top of a Disney city, city. Next myth, the Disney weather dome. Now this one is pretty far fetched, but we get this question a lot. So to you, I say, have you ever been stuck in a downpour in Disney World? No joke. Some people actually believe there is a big, huge weather dome all around Disney World that allows Disney to control the weather. No, I'm not making this up. Disney is magical, but it's not that magical. As much as we wish this was true, Disney World gets affected by weather as any other place in the world. You'll still encounter wind and rain, sweltering heat and humidity, and the occasional hurricane. So make sure to pack your ponchos and rain jackets just in case. Of course, when it rains at Disney World, don't leave. Sometimes when it rains and the crowds exit the parks, you're gonna see some of the lowest wait times you'll ever see. Also during the summertime, that is hurricane season. If you are traveling to Disney World in the summer and you're a little worried about hurricane season, don't worry, we've got you covered. You can check out Emma and I's video from last year when we were here in September during the hurricane. So we give you a bunch of great tips over there, go check it out. So Disney World Weather Dome myth busted. Domes don't exist in Disney World. Mm. I hope that's good enough. Myth. Once the park is closed, the ride is closed. This is a great tip for people trying to optimize your time and how much you do while you're at the parks. Well, I'm here to tell you that it really doesn't matter how long the line is. The line could be 50 minutes long and the park could be closing in three minutes. As long as you are in that line before the park closes, you're good. Now, Locato will usually have earlier closing times, a seven or eight o'clock, which means you can still park out to uh, a Magic Kingdom, which is usually open a little bit later, like 10 or 11. But let's say the park is closing at seven o'clock, hop in line at 6.58. Regardless, the line should be a lot shorter later on in the evening, but still, that is a great way to just hop in line, not waste a bunch of time in line. And once you get off that ride, Typically, the park tends to be empty, so you get some really great park views. Uh, you can take some fun pictures as you're exiting the park. So, in the myth where if the park closes, all of the rides close, busted. You can still ride a ride after the park is closed, but still be courteous to cast members. Frozen Ever After. Which brings us to our next Disney World myth, earlier is better than later. We preach on the channel that it's better to ride your must-do attractions first thing in the morning and last thing in the evening. But the current rumor is that the morning is way better than the evening. We thought this was such a good experiment that we decided to try it. So if you want to know which is better, the first two hours of the day or the last two hours of the day in Disney World, go check out our video already on the channel now called First Two Versus Last Two. Is it a myth or is it true? You're gonna have to find out by watching the other video. Huh. Myth, left lanes are always faster in Disney World. Now this is actually a fan fade myth slash routine. That's kind of an unspoken rule in the Disney World world. And really, I would love for this myth to be true. Now, oftentimes in Disney World, you're going to be faced uh, with a with a choice, whether it be in uh, queues or quick service locations that they're going to ask you to go left or right. And for some reason, we've always been taught that left will always be faster. We've done measurements, we've experimented. Uh, in no way is Disney making the left lines actually shorter. Uh, they're not cycling more people through the right lanes to make that way. Left lanes uh, have less people in them, nothing like that. But it is an occurrence that we've seen time and time again, why the left lanes, the left lines always so much shorter. Now there's no actual way to prove this or, or to disprove this. However, we've done some research. We have a theory. We think because a majority of the population, around 80%, is typically right-handed, that's where they're most inclined to go. Also, in the States, we drive on the right-hand side, so it's just kind of in our nature, right-handed, driving on the right side. It's just kind of how we're made. That's why I'm standing in front of the Tower of Terror. There is a moment in the boiler room right before you get on the attraction where you are told you can go left or right, and I have always gone left, and I've even tested this out with some friends, where I go left and they go right, and I am always there before they are. Not just with that attraction, but also a big Thunder Mountain. There's a big list of rides, but I encourage you, if you see a fork in the road, test it out. Let me know, did left get you there quicker? Myth, 
not busted. Because we need more proof and research. Let us know in the comments. Let us know. Next Disney World myth that they actually use the food grown on the Living with the Land attraction. Much of the produce grown in the greenhouse in the Living with the Land attraction is used at Garden Grill and Sunshine Seasons, both restaurants in the Land Pavilion. In total, over 30 tons of produce are harvested from the land each year. There's even proof of this at the Behind the Seeds Tour. The Behind the Seeds Tour is a tour that you can pay for to actually walk through the Living with the Land attraction. It is a guided tour. You walk through the greenhouse and it's my dream to do that one day. So please, if you want that as a separate video, please put it down in the comments below. I I am happy to oblige, and I know other people on our team want to do it as well. Quincy's done it before, but I haven't, so that's a dream. One day, maybe I'll get to do it. The Disney World myth that you do actually eat food from living with the land? Prove it. You actually are eating that food if you go to Garden Grill or Sunshine Seasons. We could have come up with a jingle for this, but I'm going to have Breedlove sing the original song about living with the land. Let's listen to the land we all love. Nature's plan will shine above. Listen to the land, listen to the land. Let's listen to the land we all love. Nature's plan will shine above. Listen to the land, listen to the land. Myth. Disney inflates the wait times. Pretty controversial, and it'll be very hard to prove, but we're gonna do our best. For many reasons, Disney posted wait times tend to be wrong and usually much higher numbers than actual wait times. Now, I will say oftentimes the post waits are pretty accurate, but sometimes they are so off. But why? All right, Disney, I'm gonna give you a pass on this first one, because first thing in the morning, they're just kind of guessing as they've really just opened the park, so they have no way to tell how long a line actually is. So, so it is a guess on their part, for sure. I get it. But according to fans and our viewers, there may be times where they're actually inflating the times on purpose. For example, at park closing, they may inflate the times to stop people from riding to avoid keeping cast members too late and paying overtime. Because as you know, if you get in the queue before park closing, it could be two minutes before park closing. As long as you're in the queue, you can still ride the ride. Another time they may inflate wait times is if it's a slower day, but they still want people to purchase Genie Plus. Now recently, Emma and myself went on Peter Pan's flight, which is usually a high wait time. We're talking 80, 90 minutes long of wait for Peter Pan's flight. This is actually the Instagram Decides My Day video. Now we paid for Genie Plus because the wait time was extremely high, but we actually waited longer in the lightning lane than the standby line that day. Now this may just be an odd circumstance, but why was the wait time so high? Because actually the wait time showed about 50 minutes when in reality, it was about a 15 to 20 minute wait. And because so many people had purchased Lightning Lane, we waited longer. So all of this being said, we think the high wait times and the messy wait times, we believe this just comes down to human error. I don't think anyone is purposely trying to get these times very wrong, but that's not to say Disney doesn't have some tricks from time to time. So Disney inflates the wait time, not really busted because we don't we don't actually know it started raining and that's the jingle i gotta get under the shade <laughs> This next myth, Walt Disney's head is frozen underneath Disney World. Buckle up kids, because this one is shocking and very popular. A lot of people believe that when Walt Disney passed away, his either entire body or just his head were cryogenically frozen and stored underneath the castle for safekeeping. Now this is certainly not true. First of all, even if Walt Disney was frozen, why would they put him underneath Disney World and not Disneyland, his first park? Right. Disney World wasn't even finished by the time that Walt Disney passed away. The rumors were actually started by the tabloids when Walt first passed away, which then a book was being written, and which further um, enhanced the rumors, but their source was not credible at all. There's no source because it's not true. There, there's no source. When Walt Disney passed, he was actually cremated and his ashes are somewhere in Glendale, California. There's a whole death certificate situation. They verified the cremation. Even his own family, his daughter Diane said, there's no way my father wanted to be cryogenically frozen. No way, no how. So Walt Disney's frozen head, busted. 
Well, if you passed away and if you were frozen, where would you want to be put at Disney World? Living with the land. Listen to the land. Listen to the land. Myth. Cast members can't tell you no. Cast members at Disney World are known for being polite and courteous, going the extra mile, making magic happen as often as they can, which has led some people to believe that cast members, and you're looking at two former cast members here, aren't actually allowed to say no at Disney World. Now this is absolutely untrue. Cast members can say no to you if you are doing something that um, harms the safety of others or yourself or anyone in general. If you're doing something that violates the rules of the park, they absolutely are going to tell you no and they will. Even though they can say no, that doesn't mean they like saying no. It's not fun to say no to to people at, at, at any job. Their goal is to make you happy and to bring the magic to your day. When they have to say no, it definitely bums them out. So avoid getting them to say no at, at all costs, which is why we're not gonna, going to attempt that today. However, here is a reenactment of what that would look like. You play the cast member, I'll play a guest. Okay. Excuse me, cast member. Yes, how can I help you? Can I eat all of the trash from that trash bin over there. I I would really advise you not to. I don't think it'll be good for your stomach and then you can't go right back to your mountain later. Oh, what a polite way you just declined. Thank you, cast member. Very important when you are meeting characters or interacting with characters, um, the cast members that are with those characters, you know, it might not make sense. You want to do something. You want to ask a character for an autograph or what have you, and the cast member tells you no. It is for your safety. It's for the character's safety. So especially anywhere in Disney World, but especially meeting characters, if a cast member tells you no, please do what they say. Also, at the end of fireworks, um, you may want to take a path to the left, and the cast member is telling you to go right. They know what they're doing. They do this every single night. It is for your safety. It's for efficiency. So no matter what, in general, listen to cast members. So myth, cast members can't say no. Busted. I'm gonna tell you no whether you like it or not. No, no, no. I'm busted. Listen to the land. If you like this video, be sure to like and subscribe. Now go check out where I show you 10 places you've never been in Disney World. Ooh. Bye.